That's it. Thank you for meeting up with me. That's okay. How are you, sir? I I'm good. How are you? By God's grace, I'm good. Thank you. I've watched video of you being arrested at the weekend, dragged away, handcuffed, and I just wanted to meet up to get to the bottom of what happened. Um, it seems those things become very common at Speakers Corner. So um, I've been going to Speakers Corner since 2013 summer, almost every Sunday, unless I'm out of the country or I am not well. And last Sunday, I think it was around 6 p.m., um, one of my properties being stolen. I had a book in my possession and then it was stolen. From your hands? From my hand, yeah. So you were robbed? I was robbed. Okay. Um, gently putting, yes. Yeah. It was taken without my permission and without my knowledge. Okay. And um, gentle, Muslim gentleman took it. Um, as he took it, he ran away and then his uh, friends blocked us as I was going to go and get my book back because this is third time my book is being stolen at Speaker's Corner for the last two years. And, but he's like, he looked more fitter than me, so he was able to get away and people were blocking us. Um, within 10 minutes, um, police officers turned up. They said, can we have a word? Can we talk to you? I said, sure. I was just getting my camera man to make sure like he records what they are going to say to me. In my my mind, they came because we made a, we called the police to say like oh. So you, you called the police. You were my them. friend called the police to say there is a robbery at Speaker's Corner, and that's what I thought police came for. Um, when police came, um, I was just grabbing the camera um, person, and Muslims just got so excited. And then I said, no, if you've got anything to tell me, you can tell me here. And then they told me I was under arrest. Um, I asked, I, I told them I haven't done anything wrong, but I was already kind of making my way to the van. Well, when you say making your way to the van, you wasn't just walking to the van from what No, it, it was. wasn't with the flowers and chocolates. It was, I was like kind of dragged out, right. dragged. Yeah, and they kind of handcuffed my hands. It was very uncomfortable. And I think it was very long walk. Usually you don't feel it's that long, but it was very long walk. And we had... Um, other attendees of Speaker's Corner, mainly Muslim community, was simply praising and saying Allah Akbar. And on the way to Van, while I've got like policies around me, I've been dragged, um, someone throw something on my head as well. And then they just put me in a van. Under, under, what, under what charge? Um, so when I was in the van, I was told um, I am um, arrested for criminal damage. And, and uh, done? yeah, I tried to figure that out. Um, I think the issue was I had a Quran, and Quran had holes in it, physical holes in it. I drilled holes. Someone drilled hole f holes for me and then sent it to me. Um, it was to simply have debates and discussions regarding uh, standard narrative has holes in it. So Muslim community believes that there is only one Quran which has been perfectly preserved letter by letter, dot by dot, word by word. And I kind of, uh, with a couple of colleagues, we disproved that a couple of years ago, back in 2016, by producing more than one Quran in that time. We had, we had 26, today we've got 37 Qurans. Different Qurans. Different totally Qurans. Different. They are Arabic, they are different from one another, even their author is different. Yeah. And um, so two years ago, a Muslim sheikh had an interview with a regular at Speaker's Corner where he expressed, um, I'll just put in a like kind of language we can understand. Um, yes, there are different Qurans, we know about it. Uh, which angle we look, there are holes in the narrative. Standard narrative has holes in it. Um, so since then, I'm just kind of, I think it's important topic. It, preservation of the Quran keeps Muslim in Islam. That's one of the reasons. They are still Muslims because they've been lied to. Uh, so last couple of years, I've been pushing the argument, if Muslims can explain me why I have different Qurans, why there are holes in the standard narrative. So therefore, my book in my possession contained hole in it. Um, so it was stolen, and actually the Quran they stole. Um, stole that it. was the present which was given to me, cast, like Quran specially made for me, because another Muslim last year stole my Quran. And then someone made the Quran for me and then sent it to me to That's replace it. the stolen Quran. So you're, so you're dragged away, your hands are cuffed behind your back, you're thrown into the back of the police wagon, yeah. 
taken to a police station? Yeah, so I was told I was under arrest for criminal damage. And then by the time we were taking, I was taking to Charing Cross Station, I was told also a public order 4A. Um, uh, section 4A. Yeah, a Section 4A. Um, and then so they kind of take me in. They, uh, I didn't have anything. So like all my bags, my camera, everything left at speaker's corner. Um, good, I had kind of Christians who pr uh, thankfully picked them up. And um, so they kind of asked me questions. I, did, I was intentional to not reply their questions because I believe I made my case at the van and at the station. I was there wrongly. The person who stole my Quran and who physically assaulted me is still out there. You should be doing something about it. But by the time I'm at, I'm at police station, we figured out data. The people who stole my book, with my book, they are still at speaker's corner. And they are making videos to the cameras, talking to the cameras with my book. So the man who stole your book is still there, up with yeah. the camera. The police have turned up, rather than arresting the criminal who's robbed you and arrested you. Yeah. Um, so I, they took, um, like they questioned me, uh, all like kind of your details. Do you have any medical background? What is your name, date of birth, address, all those kind of things. Um, and then they took my glasses, um, which was kind of practically, I think, not very kind at all because I can't see without my glasses. And then they are saying, okay, can you sign this? I'm just like, I can't see with my glasses. And then I was in a cell for 15 hours without my glasses. So you can't even like request Bible to read it. Uh, 15, so 15 hours you yeah. spent locked in a cell. Yeah. Uh, and then in the, like in the first entrance of the in, like kind of conversation, they are asking my details. Um, they decided they are going to strip search me. Uh, so three police uh, strip searched me and then um, they, strip they, you they made... gave me a new outfit. When you say strip searching, they made you strip naked? Yeah. For a criminal damage? Yeah. For what, under what ground? What, what, what were they suspecting? I don't know. And then they locked you in a cell for 15 hours? Yeah, around 1 o'clock um, they took my D DNA swap. Um, at 4 a.m. in the morning they interviewed me. At 4 a.m. in the morning? Yeah. Um, and the conversations, in the interview conversations were mainly about um, the t-shirt I was wearing and what kind of things I said. T Apparently, what t-shirt was you wearing? I was wearing my handmade, not handmade, but my made t-shirt, which has on the back, it has one of the Charlie Hebdo drawings on um, linked with Islam, and then in the front, um, Muhammad's picture caricature, which expresses that people are affected by the drawings emotionally. So just to make a case, because following Monday is was the 150th anniversary of Speaker's Corner. Um, yeah, let's remember where we are. You, that, this is all happening in the Speaker's Corner, the beacon of free speech, the home, yeah. of, the home of free speech, where you're allowed to say and. Anything you want. Well, questions were mainly, oh, are you not aware that people are, might be offended um, what you are going to say or what, you are wearing this or you got this. Um, it just becomes problem when at the heart of freedom of speech where we need to more be careful of whose feelings are being hurt. Um, last Sunday, my feelings are very much hurt at Speaker's Corner when people told me Jesus did not die when people told me Jesus is not the son of God. But I didn't go to Mr. Policeman and then said, oh, can you arrest her? I simply said, okay, let's have a debate and discussions on this. Um, anyway, around um, 9 a.m. in the morning, I was told um, I can go without charges. And then I left. So dragged, physically dragged, handcuffed, assaulted, robbed, stripped naked, and no charges. Nothing at all. Yeah. And 15 hours of my time has been taken away from me. 15 hours is a long time. Yes, uh, sat in a cell is, especially <laughs> looking up at quantum stockers on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> been there a few times. Um, and today, it's Thursday, I still don't know if Mr. Policeman has done anything about my stolen book because... Which you've, there asked, is, you've asked for. You yeah. were the one who phoned the police. Yeah, there are like... 
video is where people are holding my book after I'm being arrested. I still don't have my book. I don't know if the police has done anything for the physical assault I had at Speaker's Corner. When, when, when you was, let's just, so some people you might not understand, you, you was seriously assaulted recently as well. Oh yeah, that was last year. We last moved year. on from that. What, and what happened then? Uh, last year, I someone tried to physically hurt me. Um, Can you explain how? Knife attack. A knife attack. Uh, yeah, so someone tried to stab me at Speaker's Corner. Yeah. Um, have they been arrested? No. They're very, there's a video of who it was. Yeah, it, it's, it. yeah it's like um, we've got footages. Um, I'm sure police intelligence are still looking into it. That's what they're doing. I know that um, they've been told which mosque he attends. Even I was told which mosque the gentleman attends. But there's still um, no arrest. Still no arrest. Still no arrest. So, why do you, the reason I've, I want to speak to you, or I wanted to speak to you, especially about this, is do you, just put it straight, because I think you are a serious risk at Speaker's Corner. I, I think they will, I think, and I, and I want, pe and everyone should be talking now. When you were first assaulted, people should have been speaking. Politicians should have been speaking. When someone tried to stab you, they certainly should have been speaking. And now you've been robbed and the police have stepped in on the side of the criminal again. Um, do you think, you, do you think you may get killed at Speaker's Corner? That's what I'm going to Because I, I, I see it and I'm watching it and I think there should be such an outcry about your treatment there, especially as the home of free speech. Now, if this was happening to any other female, if, for example, if, 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 this, if any of this had happened to a Muslim lady in our capital city, it would be on international world news. Yeah? If a Muslim lady had had a knife drawn in her and chased and someone tried to stab her because of her views, or any of this, and like, I don't, I don't think the police would ever have dragged, dragged a lady wearing a hijab the way they dragged you, and they certainly wouldn't have made her strip naked when she got to the police station. Because there would have been such an outcry, especially if she was the victim of a robbery. Um, so I just want, yeah, just want. Um, I think um, I would say it will. Be, it is very dangerous to ask such a question. Will you get killed at Speaker's Corner one day? Because that shows we don't have a confidence in in the police who are there to protect us, and we don't have confidence in the law. Uh, Speaker's Corner is heart of freedom of speech. In 21st century, I believe you are British. British person is asking, oh, will you get killed? Do you think you will get killed in the heart of freedom oh, of I'm, speech? So yeah. I think that's dangerous, like the way it came, it, if it happens, if it comes to that point, that means like it's just all. We are in small Pakistan, just which with is, a different which label. Want, which is why I want to speak, because unfortunately I think I'm watching, I have people say it to me, but unfortunately I watch it time and think you will be martyred in Speaker's Corner. No, um, no, uh, first of all, um, I'm Christian and um, God gives lives, he takes it away when it is time. And um, in that case, like I can't just focus on, oh, this might happen, let me change my direction or something. But um, I wouldn't... I, would, I hope that nothing happens at Speaker's Corner because it will affect the nature of not only freedom of speech, but nature of humanity. Because what makes us human is our freedom of expression, our freedom of belief. And if someone is being killed in the heart of freedom of speech or even get harmed in the heart of freedom of speech, that means no good. But it's it's no good. You, that's already been affected. To, would you not it's say not by, even by your arrest? It's an effect on No, it, it has been affected, but that, like, I think still there are ways things can be done differently so that we don't see anyone else is being hurt. We don't see anyone is being simply just dragged away because of their views or because of the false claims, false accusations. Um, in, in, like, I've been to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I've, I felt more safe in Saudi Arabia than being in France or in sometimes at Speaker's Corner. Um, that's a sad state of affairs. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, like, I'm confident that I have, I'm confident that Lord Jesus Christ will take me home when it is his time. And I don't think, um, I hope nothing happens at Speaker's Corner, which not only, like, affects my physical well-being, but also affects the nature of Speaker's Corner. Which has changed. 
the nature has changed? It think? has changed. It's totally changed. It has changed because the demography who is there is different and the conversations we are having is different. Yeah. But that doesn't mean, like, even the freedom of speech is being limited. That doesn't mean it's gone. Yeah. So it's still we can make voice. Like, I'm Christian, so I, I'm not free speech activist or anything. For me, my faith comes first. Yeah. By being Christian, therefore, I need to express what I believe. I need to express what I think. I want, I want to have debate and discussions because that's the nature of my faith. Um, but at, if something kind of turns up to be physically harmful at Speaker's Corner, I think that won't be good at all. Do you? Maybe, actually, maybe I might need to, sorry, I'm just thinking loud, um, because I wasn't asked that, that question before. No, I was, uh, I was probably an uncomfortable question, and, and, I'm, I, and it's me asking you. And I only ask you it because that's what I see. Uh, and I see it in the sense that I see it as a dangerous place, and I see it as, uh, as a... I, see, uh, I, see I don't see it as a dangerous place, because it's a great place to have debates and discussions and then fight with the arguments. Yeah. Um, but also, I, like, the reason I'm currently thinking loud, when the Charlie Hebdo people were killed, I remember BBC was showing this um, footage where uh, prime ministers are walking and then the, everyone is saying we are all Charlie Hebdo. Yeah. But now, like last year, a teacher is being beheaded. Silent. There's a teacher so, in hiding from back there. Yeah, there is a teacher who's been hi now. hiding. There's a teacher who's been suspended simply using the mug, which has the picture of Muhammad and Jesus. Um, so I guess the way we kind of start taking things, looking things differently is changing. So 10 years ago, yeah, we are all Charlie Eptoists, but now let's shut up. Um, let's but, don't hurt people's feelings, so let them get away. But once they know they can get away with these things, then they take over. They yeah. conquer. You become dim before them. Which is what's happening, I believe, because you are a bit of a lone voice in, in challenging these issues, I think. No, there are lots of brothers and sisters or even atheists are um, questioning what Islam teaches and what, how some Muslims are faithfully practicing the te dangerous teachings of Islam. There are people out there. Yeah. Will you be at Speaker's Corner this weekend? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> I think you show amazing bravery. No, it's... I am Christian. I cannot live my life under fear. Only fear I have, I have is the fear of God, and that will bring me on my knees to worship my God. If God tells me don't go to Speaker's Corner, I have to be faithful and not go to Speaker's Corner. But I cannot live my life with human fear. That will paralyze us. Um, and Jesus came to set us free. So it's not only Speaker's Corner. If you start living under the fear, you won't even able to go to your next door neighbor. You might get the virus. You might not go to shop because someone might come and do something in the shop. We can't live our lives like that. Like, I don't think scripture teaches me to be paralyzed uh, through fear. And I think, I think many of our politicians are, are paralyzed through fear. Many of them are, are speaking about these issues or, or criticizing these issues. I think that the school teacher in battling that situation proved the fear of everyone because he's still living in hiding. And the, it's deafening from the, 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 the noise from our politicians on it, which is why I wanted to, to interview you to see where this story goes and the future point because this is your this is the moment now where people should be speaking out in fact they shouldn't speak now as people tried to stab you i didn't see a massive reaction i see more of a reaction about is it steve bray the man who's outside parliament every day um i've seen that blow up massive now over a free speech argument but i believe that your story is more of a free speech argument um, speaker, because of where it's happening in speaker's corner and the history of speaker's corner and the fact that the police have intervened against you this weekend like, there are lots of things, as I look back, I can kind of assume. So I haven't studied law in UK. I don't know that much about law. But I can assume there are lots of things that have been handled wrongly. Uh, but still, we've got that square, uh, which kind of, not fully, but gives us freedom of speech in certain forms. And the last time I was at Speaker's Corner, 
you got arrested. For possession of a for suspicion of a possession of an offensive weapon. And then as soon as I got to the police station, I was de-arrested. Literally. Yeah, I got de-arrested as well at the car. Literally, as soon as I got there, de-arrested. They seized my phone, took my phone, all started waving my phone, because that's what they wanted was intelligence, I believe. Um, and then I, I was held. I was held and I was let out at three o'clock in the morning. Just let out, open the door, see you later. It was uh, it was then, strange. So I was when I was let out. So I'm still wearing the ear, the dress they uh, clothes they give it to me, like kind of uh, grey wasn't my colour, but anyway, it's okay. So you don't have like sorry for the language, but you don't have your underwear, okay? So you are just leaving the police station without bra or anything. Did they keep your clothes? No, they give it oh, to me, but like there it. was no place for me yeah, to yeah, change yeah, it. Okay. So uh, I change it um, outside, like officer took me to the different um, building when I requested him. But in that, like all my bag is at speaker's corner. So I live approximately two hours away. So I need to get back. I have got like zero money. I'm just like, okay, um, how am I going to get back? So you are like, you don't have money. And then I asked the officer if I can borrow. I said, I'll post it tomorrow. I just, I need to buy my ticket. Because you buy your ticket return and you need to use your ticket on the day. So if you don't, if you don't use it, you have to buy, re you, you need to buy new ticket. Yeah. So like nine o'clock in the morning, you are in London. You need approximately 40 pounds to get back to your place. Yeah. You have no money. And police officers, like even you are requesting them to borrow. It's not like, give me your kidney. Just let me borrow your money, I'll return it to you. Um, answer was no. I was like, okay. And then they said, they give me a piece of paper which says private and confidential. Um, tells them, t paper says like, why I've been arrested. They said, if I show this paper to bus driver, bus driver will drive me to High, um, high Park. Like take the bus which goes to High Park where you can um, collect your things. Like they think well, it's been like, yeah, car. it's been like 15 hours. My bag and my camera, everything is like just done. And, yeah, that, I think that's just why. It, <laughs> yeah. But um, God was great. I had um, a brother from Speaker's Corner who collect my things. And then like when I get out, he was like left his place like early morning to wait at outside of the station, bring my bag. So in that sense, I was blessed. But like even that process just like, well, I don't have money. Yeah. You, took, you took me here without my consent. You kept me here. And you can't even like lend me 40 pounds for me to get back, which I'm going to give it back to you. It's not like, give me your money. I'm going to get and some bathing or something. And essentially, if they've released you without charge and you've been wrongfully arrested anyway, because yeah. there's no crime. Yeah. I think it's a sad state of affairs. And I think that every time I see anything around Speaker's Corner, um, it seems to be the police surrendering to more people. Um, I think they find it easier to just take one person out because um, in the past when I got arrested, I think last year, May, um, I can't remember fully how it was phrased, but police, so the there were a group of people who were kind of just harassing me and then one of the gentlemen even exposed, his, exposed him. Exposed his? Yeah. Uh, Exposed his private part. So I was the one who got arrested in that occasion. I was like. So gentleman in... exposes his private parts and you get arrested? Yeah, for, uh, and then I was in police cell like over 20 hours in that occasion. Yeah. But there was a video where, so these people, individuals who are like causing me to uh, be arrested, police is simply, they are asking, oh, why did you take arrested her? Because of her t shirt, she's offending stuff. And then officer says, Think to stadium, so you, sorry, stadium, and then you've got football fans. I can't remember what, let's say Liverpool and Sunderland. So if you've got Sunderland football person in the Liverpool side, so you will take the so, Sunderland. So, like, in the old, so they, they were looking at it like this is the so speaker's corner is the Muslim side. Yeah, it's a Muslim side. You've got a Christian and one person, and then versus we've got like three, four Muslim men or 40 Muslim men. So we will take one person. This area is belong to certain people, and those are the crowd. So we will take this person in or so move forget, this forget person. Who's committing the crime. Yeah. We'll just take the easy option. So, yeah, that's like, but you seem like that's wrong because after that, once they notice, oh yeah, so logic is 
if you are cut more people, then one person will be removed. So that's the logic. So after that, like months after months, this group would come and like hackle, wouldn't even allow you to speak because they know they can simply get away with that. And then on Sunday, they are saying, oh, arrest her, Allah Akbar, remove her. They are all praising Allah stuff for how Allah is wisely using the British police officers. Like once you give the wrong image, people are simply just saying, oh yeah, we can get away with this. So they were able to get away with that for last couple of years. So therefore it is not surprising that you get to see that happened on Sunday again. And it will happen again, but that doesn't mean it is right. No, so right. we live in a time, it is very easy to call evil good. And those are like biblical times we are living. Evil is good and we proudly call evil good. Well, um, yeah, thank you for sitting down with me. Thank you for, because I just wanted to ask the questions and get to That's the bottom okay. of what's happening. That's and, okay. Um, you know, my, my, and I hope that lots more people are at Speaker's Corner as well. It's um, somewhere I think everyone should go to, not to challenge, but to have these discussions. If, if more, we if do not like change our ideas we have, if we don't do exchange of the ideologies, we will never able to solve the problems. And if that has been taken away, our humanity is being like already crushed. Okay, well, thank you. Cheers. It's mad, isn't it? It's insanity. That's okay. Today's a new day. Today's a new day. Sunday's a new Sunday. <laughs>